supposedly a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden took a television camera crew with him went into Osama bin Laden's hideout interviewed him and his top leadership and he came out and told everybody within three weeks Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel now don't you think that's kind of strange folks you see because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world with the biggest budget in the history of the world has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years and can't find him some doofus jerk off reporter with a camera crew bosses right into his hideout and interviews him. and I'm telling you be prepared for a major attack but it won't be Osama bin Laden it will be those behind the New World Order. I wonder what Osama bin Laden's targets are supposed to be. And if they don't, you know, if this doesn't materialize in the next two or three weeks, it will eventually materialize because they haven't succeeded in getting the guns out of the hands of the American people, nor have they succeeded in taking our freedoms away. And so I can tell you with a certainty, they must do something terrible in order to stop this backlash and regain the sympathy of the mass herds of sheeple out there. Part of that plan, of course, is to induce the gradual surrender of American sovereignty, piece by piece and step by step, to various international organizations of which the United Nations is the outstanding but far from the only example. Now, here are the aims for the United States. One, greatly expanded government spending for every conceivable means of getting rid of ever larger sums of American money as wastefully as possible. Two, higher and then much higher taxes. Three, an increasingly unbalanced budget despite the higher taxes. Four, wild inflation of our currency. Five, government controls of prices, wages, and materials supposedly to combat inflation. Six, greatly increased socialistic controls over every operation of our economy and every activity of our daily lives. This is to be accompanied naturally and automatically by a correspondingly huge increase in the size of our bureaucracy and in both the cost and reach of our domestic government. Seven, far more centralization of power in Washington and the practical elimination of our state lines. There is a many faceted drive at work to have our state lines eventually mean no more within the nation than our county lines do now within the states. Eight, the steady advance of federal aid to and control over our educational system, leading to complete federalization of our public education. Nine, a constant hammering into the American consciousness of the horror of modern warfare, the beauties and the absolute necessity of peace, peace always on communist terms, of course. And ten, the consequent willingness of the American people to allow the steps of appeasement by our government which amount to a piecemeal surrender of the rest of the free world and of the United States itself. So brush the 
inside as dust out of your eyes, my friends, and the communist soap suds out of your brain, and ask yourselves in all honesty, what on earth is wrong with the United States simply minding its own business? Or with having its foreign policy function primarily for the safety and benefit of the American people. <coughs> Which is exactly what we had done for the first 140 years of our existence as a nation to the incredible advantage of ourselves and everybody else. Everybody, that is, except a numerically small clique of power-lusting conspirators who had somehow inflicted themselves on a gullible world. While we turn to a very brief summarization of what we hope the John Birch Society will help and even sometimes lead the American people to accomplish during the next 15 years. One, our first and most important specific undertaking should be to restore the complete independence of the United States. This This includes our resolution to get us out of the United Nations and get the United Nations out of the United States. <laughs> Two, we must once again make our money freely redeemable in gold at some realistic price. And we must take all practicable legislative steps to prevent a recurrence of the enormous thievery and other subversive crimes that have been perpetrated on the American people through a contrived inflation by every president from Franklin Roosevelt to Richard Nixon. Three. Three, we should reduce the number of government bureaus, of government civilian employees, and the whole quantity of government by at least 50 percent. And, and we should achieve at least this much reduction in proper fashion through gradually convincing a majority of the American people of the wisdom of such a course. Four, we should withdraw all American troops from every spot on earth that is not American soil except when and where such troops may be required as decided by Congress to protect American lives and property from criminal vandalism. Five. Five. We should get government out of the areas and functions and activities where government does not belong. Again, Again, all steps to this end should be taken gradually, but nevertheless just as rapidly as enough of the American people can be persuaded to support such progress. Any such achievement will require a truly massive educational force, but that's exactly what we hope to build during the next 15 years. We could go ahead for at least 100 numbered items. But the John Birch Society will undoubtedly be working on more than that many specific projects, which will be laid out in its bulletins before another 180 months will have rolled around. And all of them will fit into, all of these projects will fit into the general pattern indicated by the five major objectives listed above. So let's really wind up this marathon monologue with one final thought. None of us can guarantee anything about what the future will bring. Your speaker knows what a job we have before us to rid our country of the scourge of communism within the next few years, and then to go ahead on our constructive program so well that 15 years from now, we shall already be entering an era of far less government, of a much sounder sense of responsibility, and with God's help of a better world. But I sincerely believe that it can be done, and this much I know. If every man and woman in this audience should leave here tonight feeling in his or her own mind and heart that it can and must be, be, done, must be done, then it surely will be. 
And so, all of you patriots of good character, good conscience, and noble ideals, whom we can reach with the filmed version of this speech in a thousand other audiences, it is with a great deal of confidence and energizing will to win that we invite you to join us in our epic undertaking. While to all of you great, wonderful friends in this present audience, I certainly extend my very deep thanks indeed for so much patience and attention. Thank you and good night. If you, Congressman, if you have no money and you fall down on the street with a heart attack, you have no money, you, no one should take care of you? The government should not provide an ambulance no. or treat you? No, but we don't have a history in this country of that happening even before government started managing health care. I practiced medicine in both circumstances in the early 60s. Uh, we didn't have managed care and I worked in a uh, Catholic hospital. I made three dollars an hour and nobody was ever turned away and there were many many church hospitals and you had uh, Shriner hospitals and a lot of a lot of free care was given. Uh, today you had uh, Shriner hospitals and a lot of a lot of free care was given. Uh, today you had uh, Shriner hospitals and a lot of a lot of free care was given. Uh, today Lucifer, what is your problem? Just that, sir. Okay. I'm a Christian, sir. I'm pure and virtuous and wholesome and innocent. How can you say anything to bite about me? Sir, you need to be born again. Is I that, am born again. Is that, now, did you just say that you are Lucifer? I am Lucifer. Okay, define Lucifer for me. Pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Lu say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy... Virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the Internet. Oh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach, is that Lucifer, Lucifer is light. No. And you're, what you're confirming it. What about those hospitals? It. And you're, it, what you're about those hospitals? It. And you're, it, what you're about those hospitals? They, they, they you know what, sir? <clears throat> Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not, we did not do these good deeds in your name. And you'll say, away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Jesus said it? In Matthew chapter 5. Mercy. No. That's hard to believe. So you're that a Christian and you don't know that. Actually. No, I really am. You are. Because that, I'm pure and virtuous. You're pure and virtuous, okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're perfect without Jesus, right? No, 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 no. Okay, tell me about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Oh. Well, he's, he's my leader. Is he the Son of God? Yes, he is. Is he the only worshipful master? Yes. Have you ever been called worshipful master? No, because I, I've just been too busy. I've been working. Working. Been working to help people. What like kind you. of work? Okay. Get out of here. <clears throat> See, this is what a mason confesses, is that Lucifer is light. You heard it? From uh, Morocco, which is in North Africa, you can look it on your map. Uh, and in the year 800 AD, 50,000 Catholics were slaughtered there by Muslims. And they said the blood ran so thick that the Muslims dipped their hats in the blood and their hats turned red. And it's been a 1,200 year sign of Muslims' victory over Christians. And it was first commercially sold from Fez, Morocco. And uh, the Shriners wear Fezes. Now, the, sh the Shriners uh, tell us w why they wear the Fez. This is in a book in 1977 put out by the sh Sabar Shrine Temple. They say this in the book, quote, the Fez has been handed down through the ages as one of the most significant headdresses. The Fez derives its name from the place where it was first manufactured commercially, the holy city of Fez in Morocco, end quote. Also, during the initiation ceremonies of the Shriners, they, quote, seal their solemn oath in the name of Allah, the God of our fathers. A little later on in the ritual, they, quote, they acknowledge, quote, Islam as the one true faith. And uh, you can ask some guy who claims to be a Catholic or a Christian, that, that how can they do this, you know, that, uh, saying Allah is the one true faith. They also have on their calendar, the Shriners calendar, the Order of Quetzalcoatl, which is pretty interesting because Quetzalcoatl is the stone serpent which Our Lady of Guadalupe came in Mexico to crush and she converted eight million to the Catholic faith by means of those apparitions. Uh, some of the papal condemnations against Freemasonry, so that people know that Freemasonry has always been condemned by the church, 
Leo the Thirteenth says, quote, Let no man think that he may, for any reason whatsoever, join the Masonic sect if he values his Catholic name and his eternal salvation, end quote. Of government, we have pushed these prices up. Pumping money into a system doesn't improve quality. It increases prices. Look at our educational system. Look we now. pump in money, prices go up. The quality of education go up, and the quality of medicine has not gone up by just pumping more money into Look. it. Lyndon Johnson once said the probable answer is that a government's going to have to be half capitalistic and half socialistic. You have to have some. Social security is socialism. You have to take care of those who don't have. Pure capitalism can't work. Would you agree with that? No, not, not really. It's sort of like I practice OBGYN. I never could tell my patient they had a touch of pregnancy. And, uh, you know, you're either pregnant or you're not. You either have government intervention messing up the markets or, or you don't. You either believe in freedom and, and believe in, in voluntary choices. I mean, just look at this disaster with the swine flu vaccine. They, they take over the whole project, we pump in mil billions of dollars, and they come up with shortages, no, the distribution is lousy, and they come up with shortages, no, the distribution is lousy, and they come up with shortages, no, the distribution is lousy, and they're talking about forcing people to take them in, in places like New York, and who no, nobody's even proved that it's necessary yet. We have still right. a lot yeah. of deaths from ordinary flu, far surpassing swine flu. So man, central economic planning but, in anything fails, and especially in medicine it fails. But, but Congressman, everyone online getting it who's getting it free is not standing there complaining about government involvement. Yeah, but I have a daughter that practices uh, uh, medicine, and I was talking to her about it, and she says, oh, yeah, Dad, it's, I, I can give shots, and it's for free, but we, we don't have anything. So when something is free and you don't have it, it it's irrelevant. And, uh, and, and some of the people who don't want it are being forced to take it. We have lost our faith and confidence in understanding how free markets work. There's also many blessings with vaccines. Uh, vaccines. There's also many blessings with vaccines. Uh, vaccines. There's also many blessings with vaccines set up.